Here is your latest African news. Rwanda. Rwanda marks 28 years since the 1994 genocide. Rwanda has begun a week of commemoration and 100 days of mourning to mark the 27th anniversary of the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi ethnic group. About 1 million people, mostly of the Tutsi community and moderate Hutus, were killed in the genocide by Hutu extremists during a massacre within a span of 100 days. President Paul Kagame and First Lady Jeanette Kagame, alongside the Dean of Diplomatic Corps and representative of survivors laid wreaths at the Kigali Genocide Memorial, where over 250,000 victims are laid to rest. Kagame then lit the flame of remembrance at the memorial. This year's commemoration comes days after a French commission appointed by President Emmanuel Macron in April 2019 said France was politically responsible for inaction amid preparations for genocide committed by extremist Hutus but downplayed the country's role as an accomplice to the genocidal operation. Commenting on the report, Kagame said it marks an important step toward a common understanding of what took place. President Kagame faulted countries offering genocide suspects safe haven, urging them to either try them in court or hand them over to Rwanda to face justice. Rwanda's genocide fugitives tracking unit data shows that more than 1,000 suspects have taken refuge in different countries including France, the US, Netherlands and Canada. Nigeria Win for Nigerian Women on Public Offices Quota a Nigerian court has ordered the government to enforce the country's gender policy which stipulates that 35% of appointments in public office be reserved for women. Justice Donatas Nkoroos ruling has been hailed by rights campaigners. Nigerian women's group have been calling for more women representation in political and appointive positions. Activist Muflate Fijabi, who was present during the ruling, told local media that she was happy with the judgment. This comes as Nigerian lawmakers are expected to vote again on three of the five rejected gender equality bills. Parliament rescinded in decisions last month after women's groups held protests across the country. Democratic Republic of Congo Democratic Republic of Congo's Tshisekedi set to visit Kenya to sign EAC treaty. Democratic Republic of Congo's President Felix Tshisekedi is currently in Kenya where he is expected to sign the East African Community Treaty. Kenya is the current chair of the EAC and Tshisekedi is expected to sign the treaty before President Uhuru Kenyatta in Nairobi. Tshisekedi's communication office said he will have intense activities alongside his Kenyan counterpart Uhuru Kenyatta. Democratic Republic of Congo became the seventh member of the community on March 29th when the EAC heads of state during the 19th Ordinary Summit admitted King Shasa following recommendations by the Council of Ministers. Kenyatta, the summit chairperson, informed the meeting that the Democratic Republic of Congo met all the criteria for admission as provided for in the treaty for the establishment of the East African community. Burkina Faso Burkina Faso ex-president Rock Kabore allowed out of detention. Burkina Faso's former president Rock Kabore has been under house arrest since he was toppled in a military coup in January. He has been allowed to return to his family home, the country's interim government said in a statement. West African leaders in March asked the military government to free the ex-president and lay out a more acceptable timeline for a return to democracy than its current 36-month transition period, which was agreed internally after the coup. Kabore will return to his residence in the capital Ogadougou, the interim government said, adding that security measures would be installed to guarantee his safety. The military government has so far resisted pressure from the West African bloc ECOWAS to relinquish power in less than three years, saying its priority is to restore security in the insurgent-hit country. Africa-wide, eager to set up leadership academy in Nairobi. The Intergovernmental Authority on Development, IGAD, is set to establish a leadership training institution in Nairobi to mentor and train the next generation of regional leaders in order to improve peace and security. A dispatch from the eight-member bloc says the center will help in instilling leadership qualities including integrity and ability to manage crisis. The IGAD members are Kenya, Uganda, Somalia, South Sudan, Sudan, Djibouti, Eritrea, and Ethiopia. However, Eritrea has been boycotting meetings. The academy to which Kenya's president Uhuru Kenyatta has agreed to be patron will draw students from each of the IGAD member states and other African countries which may sign a memorandum of understanding with the institution. According to the plan, the institution will admit 25 students every academic semester who will be trained on two programs, leadership and integrity, democracy, governance and human rights. 
We have great news. Tuna Cheki, Kunda Kids, and Nala have partnered together to bring you Mawu and the Gardens of Plenty, our first African's children's book for free. Nala is a money transfer app that uses the latest technology and works with local communities to make payments as hassle-free as possible. The easy-to-use app allows anyone to quickly send money from the UK to Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Ghana, with many other African countries and currencies coming soon, at the lowest rates available. To get a free copy of Mawu and the Gardens of Plenty for yourself, family, or kids, download the Nala app, use the code KUNDAKIDS and make a transfer of as little as £1. For those in the US, you can download the app and RSVP for your free book coming next month. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, follow, share and like our video. It's the best way of supporting us. And remember, Africa is watching.